My discourse is biological anthropology. We will begin by discussing what biological anthropology is. Anthropology is just the study of humans. There are various fields that study different things about human beings. Biological anthropology is the study of what makes humans biologically unique. It covers a wide variety of fields, bioarchaeology, primatology, to human biology. A good quote that I found that demonstrates the importance of the field and how the field is currently being structured is from Blakey. And he says, biological anthropology, of course, is more than STEM. It is where STEM, social sciences, and humanities meet. This is important because this is part of what is making this course in the field so interesting, as well as difficult to structure now, because the field has moved from a hard biological science into more of a integrated holistic science. The articles I analyzed were first de developmental systems and inequality, linking evolutionary and political economic theory and biological anthropology by Hicks and Leonard. Um, which is just a study of uh, how society and our economic systems came about, how they affect us, and trying to link that to evolution, which is difficult because 10,000 years of human civilization is not much in evolutionary time. My second article, Food, Water, and Scarcity Towards a Broader Anthropology of Resource Insecurity, is an article looking at how uh, food and water scarcity are different, and then bringing it together and discussing how they should be also observed together. And then finally, an evolutionary anthropological perspective on modern and human origins by Marine is an article basically just demonstrating the biological perspective and by the anthropological perspective on modern human origins and what caused our speciation from other primates. The rhetorical subjects of analysis that I did were for structure, then the terminology, um, and then finally the audiences of the articles. So for structure. They use abstracts and introductions. They aren't really notified as either of those, but they are. there is an introduction paragraph that helps describe what the article is going to be talking about before they get into it. And then once they get into it, there are titles and subheadings which help guide the reader as well as the writer and keep things focused. Wutich and Brewis in their food and water article uh, use an interesting thing where they have headings of the general propositions and then they have subheadings where they talk about uh, different things within that general proposition that might be affecting it. And then at the end of each of these subheadings, they have a small conclusion where they just basically frame, this is what we're trying to get at with this section of the article, which is very helpful, very interesting, makes it easier to read and understand what's going on. Then in the two articles I read for current anthropology, which were the food, food and water scarcity, as well as the political, economic, and evolutionary theory articles, they both have comment reply sections where immediately after the conclusion, they have a comment section where other scientists from other schools and from other research fields comment. And they say, well, this is what I think. This was good. This was, I think maybe your perspective could be aided by viewing it from this angle instead. And then following the comment, reply section where the authors of the article reply and basically just give their thoughts on the comments and discuss how they might change their research in the future based on the comments. And this is just a really good example of how the field is evolving, as well as these articles are very clearly for other biological anthropologists to read and comment on to help progress things further. Um, next, the content of the articles and the way that they structure it. So all three articles are discussing different things and then trying to integrate them. And the way that they do this is the, the beginning of the article is very detailed descriptions of the, of the individual theories. And they use meta-analysis, they use other researchers, they, they pull everything together to try and describe the theory that they are going to be integrating, the theories that they're going to be integrating. Um, and then finally, after all of this is done, they do an integration piece where they start to bring everything together and they go, this is how these things all come together. This is the hypothesis that we're promoting and why this might be important or beneficial to the field. And then they conclude with the typical conclusion. Second, terminology. So within the field, they use abbreviations for time because it's an evolutionary science. Geological sciences also do this because there's so much time that's passing. And so they use KA to abbreviate for a thousand years ago. So six KA is 6,000 years ago. Also goes for millions and then basic taxonomy. If you are reading a bunch of species names and you don't understand what taxonomy is, you're going to be confused by this. You'll, you'll read H sapiens. You don't know what H means. But if you have an understanding of it, you know, oh, that means homo sapiens. This is a good topic about humans or the paniscus they're talking about pan paniscus which are bonobos and then the final field the, the, the final terminology there's more but this is these are the three important ones i think from the article that i read is the understanding of what neo-darwinism is which is just basically it's the most popular theory in evolution right now but it's starting to shift because of what's happening in biological anthropology where it just it's the idea that you can observe adaptation and speciation purely through genetics 
like genetic factors are the only things that we're observing at this point. And that's starting to change as we're understanding that like, well, actually we have really complex social behaviors and those aren't necessarily entirely genetic. They can be affected by epigenetics, which are genetics changing. These things are important. And it's, if you understand this, it makes it easier because neo-Darwinism is starting to be dismantled by more research that we're starting to do as the field becomes more holistic. Um, now, finally, the audiences, primary audience members is the members of the discipline supported by the comment and reply section. Secondary audience members are those of other social sciences because of the holisticness of the field and because we're trying to get as many eyes onto these problems and onto these theories as we possibly can because they are very important to developing better human life. And finally, the tertiary audience, um, and this is what we're going to talk about for the last little bit, is just the general public and public officials because understanding how things happened or why we do things is very important to structuring society. We can see this in criminal justice. We can see this in economic insecurity. We can see these things being very important. And if we had an actual functional understanding of them outside of just the current popular stigma that we have of individualism in the West, especially, we can more effectively create and promote societies that benefit more people. Here are my sources. So thank you so much. Um, have a good day.